Hello everyone, welcome to Premier Math. Today we are going to discuss some important math problems on simple ringers based on previous year questions. We will be solving these questions using speed matrix. So let's start our session. Our first question is the ratio of principal and its yearly amount is 8 is to 9. What is the rate of simple interest per annum? We need per annum. Here you can see I invested 8 parts in the bank. After 1 year I got 9 part. That means difference between 9 part and 8 part is 1 part which is the interest I received after 1 year. Here you already know amount is equal to principal plus interest. Then interest is equal to amount minus principal. Now if interest is one part that means I got one part out of this initial amount 8 part. So 1 by 8 is the rate. 1 by 8 into 100 means it is 12.5 percentage. So option B is your answer. That is for example. If I invest 100 rupees in the bank, after 1 year, I got 112.5 rupees. That means difference between amount received after 1 year and amount invested initially is equal to 12.5 rupees. This 12.5 rupees I got from this 100 rupees. So, rate is equal to 12.5 rupees. Another example, if I invest 1000 rupees in a bank, after 1 year gap, I got 1125 rupees. Now, the difference between amount received after 1 year and the amount invested initially is equal to 125 rupees. This 125 rupees is the interest here. This interest 125 rupees I got from this initial amount 1000 rupees. If I convert it into percentage, 0, 0 cancel, 12.5 is the right here. So, option B is your answer. Ram deposited a certain sum of money in a bank at 12 percentage per annum simple interest for 4 year and deposited equal amount in fixed deposited in a bank for 5 year at 15 percentage per annum simple interest. If the difference in interest from two sources is Rs. 1350, then the sum deposited in each case is here he deposited equal amount in two different bank and in one bank at a rate of 12 percentage for four year that means he deposited an amount of money in a bank for 12 percentage rate for four years means he will receive 12 into 4 48 percentage interest after four years now in another bank he deposited equal amount for 5 years at a rate of 15 percentage. So, 15 percentage for 5 years is equal to 15 into 5, 75 percentage. So, after 5 years, he will get 75 percentage simple interest. 75 percentage simple interest. Now, the difference between, the difference in interest from two sources is 1350. Here the difference between 75 percentage and 48 percentage is 27 percentage which is equal to 1350. Now 7 into 5 35. So 27 goes 5 times in 135. That means 1 percentage is 50 then 100 percentage. That is the sum is 100 percentage. Sum is equal to 50 into 100. 5000 rupees. So option B is your answer. 100 percentage means sum. The sum of rupees 1200 is lent to be paid back in 5 equal annual installments of rupees 264 each. The rate of interest per annum is here principal is 1200 and amount paid back in 5 years is equal to 5 into 264. That means 1000 plus 300 plus 20 that is equal to 1320 that is the amount paid back in 5 years. Now the difference between amount and principal is equal to interest which is equal to 120. Now you can see this 120 is 10 percentage of 1200. So here interest for 5 years is equal to 120 that means rate for 5 years interest rate 
for 5 years is equal to 10 percentage because 120 is equal to 10 percentage of 1200. Now, rate for 1 year that is annual interest rate is equal to 10 percentage by 5 which is equal to 2 percentage. So, option C is your answer. Rupees 800 amounts to rupees 920 in 3 years at simple interest. If the interest rate is increased by 3 percentage, it would amount to how much? Here, we don't have to find out the current rate. If the current rate is R percentage, 800 rupees with the R percentage amounts to rupees 920 in 3 years. But here rate increased by 3 percentage. That is now the rate is R plus 3 percentage. And this R plus 3 percentage is for 3 years. That means we have to add this 3 percentage for 3 years. That is 9 percentage of this 800 to current amount. Here increment. Increment in rate for 3 years is equal to 3 into 3, 9 percentage. And this 9 percentage is for this 800 rupees. That is principal. Now, double zero and percentage get cancelled. 9 into 80 is equal to 72 rupees. So, this 72 rupees is the new interest added because of this 3 percentage rate increment for 3 years. So, the new amount is equal to current amount is 920 and 72 rupees. New interest added is 72 rupees. So, total become 992. Option A is your answer. If you have difficulties in understanding this, here 800 is the principal and interest received for R percentage for 3 year is equal to 920. So, this is the current amount. Now, here Increment in rate is equal to 3 percentage for 3 years. Here already 3 year is written. So, R plus 3. R plus 3 percentage is the new increment in rate for 3 years. That means here we need to add extra interest for this 3 percentage for 3 years. That is, I will add this as extra as interest for 9 percentage interest for 9 percentage which is equal to 920 plus interest for 9 percentage is 9 percentage of 800 so which is equal to 920 plus 72 992 so option a is your answer a sum of rupees 4000 is lent out in two parts one at 8 percentage simple interest and the other at 10 percentage simple interest if the annual interest is rupees 352, the sum lent at 8 percentage is. Here, allegation is the best method for these types of problem. Total money is 4000 and one part of 4000 is lent at 8 percentage and other part lent at 10 percentage. So, one part lent at 8 percentage and other part lent at 10 percentage. Now, Annual interest received is rupees 352. This 352 rupees received from this 8 percentage and 10 percentage sum. Now, 352, I should write it in percentage format because 8 and 10 in percentage format. So, 352 received from this total money 4000 rupees. So, 352 out of 4000 is how much percentage? 0, 0 cancel. 4 goes 8 times in 35. Remaining 3, 32 by 4 is 8. So, 88 by 10 is equal to 8.8. So, this is 352 is 8.8 percentage of 4000. Now, this 8 percentage and 10 percentage constitute this 8.8 percentage. Now, take the difference between 8 and 8.8 percentage which is equal to 0.8 percentage. Now take the difference between 10 and 8.8 percentage, which is equal to 1.2 percentage. This is the ratio of money lent at 8 percentage and 10 percentage respectively. Percentage, percentage cancel, point and point cancel, remaining is 12 is to 8. Now 
4 goes 3 times in 12, 4 goes 2 times in 8. That means 3 is to 2 is the ratio of sum of money lent at 8% and 10% respectively. Now we need to find sum lent at 8%. So sum lent at 8% is equal to 3 parts. 3 parts. So 3 out of total part is 3 plus 2, 5. And total money is 4000. Now 3 by 5 of 4000. 5 goes 8 times in 40. So 3 into 800 is 2400. So option C is your answer. If the difference of the compound interest and simple interest on a sum of money for 3 years is rupees 186. Find the sum of money if the rate of interest in both the cases be 10%. Let us consider sum as 100 parts. If you find the value of 1 part, then sum is equal to 100 into value of 1 part. So, this is the concept of parts here. Now, symbol interest means interest on sum. That is, sum means Money invested initially. So, interest on money invested initially is the symbol interest. This is same for every year. Symbol interest is same for every year. Now, compound interest means interest on sum plus interest on interest received on previous years. Interest received on previous years. So, this will vary every year. That means compound interest increases every year. So this is the concept of simple interest and compound interest. So I will use the same concept here. I don't use any formula here. Just use the concept. That is simple interest for first year, second year and third year is same for every year. That is simple interest is interest on sum. Here interest rate is 10 percentage for 3 years. So, I write 3 years here. Now, for every year, I will get 10 percentage on this sum. That is 10 percentage of 100 part is the sum. Now, percentage and double zero get cancelled. 10 into 1 is equal to 10 part. So, simple interest I received for every year is 10 part. So, for, for the first year, I will receive 10 part. For the second year, I will receive 10 part. For the third year, I will write receive 10 parts. Now, total 30 parts, I will receive 100 parts as simple interest. Now, compound interest. Compound interest means interest on sum plus interest on interest received on previous year. Now, interest on sum for the first year is 10 percentage of 100 parts which is equal to 10 part. And there is no previous year in the first year. So, I only receive interest on sum for the first year. For the second year, I will receive interest on sum as 10 parts. Plus, I will receive interest on the interest received on previous year. Here, interest received on previous year is 10 parts. So, 10 percentage of the 10 part I will receive on second year as well. That is, here, Percentage means divided by 100. So, double zero, double zero get cancelled. Remaining is 1 into 1, 1 part. So, I will receive 1 part extra in the second year as interest. Now, for the first year, I received 10 parts as interest. For the second year, I received 11 part. But here you can see for simple interest, I only receive 10 parts. So, Interest vary every year. Now, third year, interest received on sum is equal to 10 part. Then, interest received for the previous year. Previous year. I got how much interest previous year? I got 10 part plus 10 part plus 1 part. That is total 21 part I received on previous year as interest. So, 10 percentage of the 21 part. Here, percentage means divided by 
100. Now 0, 0 cancel. 21 by 10 is equal to 2.1 part. That is, on third year, I will receive 2.1 part as interest. On third year, I will receive 2.1 part as interest. Now you can see, if you take the difference between simple interest and compound interest, this 10 part, 10 part, 10 part and this 10 part, 10 part, 10 part cancel each other. That means remaining is 1 part plus 2.1 part. This is the difference. This is the difference. That is, here difference mentioned in the question is rupees 186. That is, difference between simple interest and compound interest is 186. That 186 is 3.1 part. 1 part plus 2.1 part is 3.1 part. So, 1 part is equal to 186 divided by 3.1 which is equal to 60. If you find the value of 1 part, sum is equal to 100 part which is equal to 100 into 60 that is 6000. So, option D is your answer. A borrowed a loan from B at 8% simple interest for 2 years and repaid the loan with 1,65,184 amount of loan taken by A S. Here interest for 2 years is equal to 8% into 2, 16%. If I consider principal as 100%, then amount is equal to principal plus interest that is 116%. If this 116% is equal to 165184. Here amount repaid is 1,65,184. Then principal 100 percentage is equal to here. If 116 goes in this one, then there must be two zeros at the end of our answer. Let's check. 116 goes one time in 165. Remaining is 49. So 116 goes here. Second digit all are 4. 4 times in 491. Remaining must be 100 into 4 is 400. 16 into 4 is 64. So 464 and 491. Difference is 27. So 116 goes 2 times in 271. Here third digit is 2. All others third digit are 3, 6 and 8. So option D is your answer. That is this is. 1424. So 100% is equal to 1424 into 100. So option D is your answer. Prakash lands a part of 20,000 rupees at 8% simple interest and remaining at 4 by 3% simple interest. His total income after a year was rupees 800. Find the sum land at 8%. Here allegation is the best method for these types of problem. The total money lend is 20,000 and part of this 20,000 lend at 8% simple interest and other part lend at 4 by 3% simple interest. So, write 8% and 4 by 3% on LHS and RHS respectively. Now, income after a year was rupees 800. So, this 800 is received from this 8% and 4 by 3% respectively. So, write 800 in the middle. Now, this 8 and 4 by 3 in percentage format. So, we should find the percentage form of this 800. This 800 is received from this total 20,000 rupees. So, 800 out of 20,000 is 0, 0 cancel, 0, 0 cancel, 8 by 2 is 4 percentage. So, 800 is 4 percentage of 20,000. So, write 4 percentage in the middle. Now you can see this 8% simple interest and 4 by 3% simple interest constitute this 4%. Now take the difference. That is difference between 8 and 4 is 4%. Four difference between 4 by 3 and 4 is 8 by 3 percentage. That is 4 minus 4 by 3 is 3 into 4 12. 12 minus 4 is 8. So 8 by 3. Now, if you take the ratio of 8 by 3 and 4 percentage, percentage percentage cancel, 4 goes 2 times in 8. That is 
2 by 3 is to 1. That means 2 is to 3 is the ratio. So, sum length at 8 percentage is 2 part and sum length at 4 by 3 percentage is 3 part. Now, sum length at 8 percentage, we need to find it. Here, total part is 2 plus 3, 5 part. This 5 part is this 20,000 rupees. Now, 5 goes 4 times in 20. That is 1 part is equal to 4,000. Now, sum length at 8 percentage is equal to 2 part. 2 part. So, 2 part is equal to 2 into 4,000 which is equal to 8,000. Or you can find 2 by 5 into 20k. This is also 8k. Because 2 part out of 5 part. 2 part is the money lend at 8 percentage. Total part is 2 plus 3, 5 part. Which is in 20,000 rupees. So, which is converted into 20,000 rupees is 8,000. So, option A is your answer. A shopkeeper sold an item at 10 percent is lost after giving a discount equal to half of the mark price. Then cost price is, let us consider mark price as 100 rupees. Mark price means price tag. Now, this shopkeeper giving a discount equal to half of the price tag, that is half of the mark price. So, here discount is equal to half of the mark price which is equal to Half of the price tag means which is 50 rupees. So, 50 rupees off to this 100 rupees price tag item. That means he is selling this product at 50 rupees. Because price tag of an item is 100 rupees. He is giving 50 rupees off to that. Then he is selling that product at 50 rupees. But by selling this item at 50 rupees, he lost 10 percentage. So, this 50 rupees leads to 10 percentage loss. 10 percentage loss means he only got 90 percentage of the cost price. So, this 50 rupees by selling this item at 50 rupees, he only got 90 percentage of the cost price. This 50 rupees means 50 rupees is equal to half of the mark price. That is half of the price tag is 50 rupees. Now, 2 goes 50 times in 100. 0, 0 cancel. Cost to price is equal to 5 by 9 of marked price. That is cost to price is equal to 5 by 9 of price tag. So, option C is your answer. If the symbol interest on rupees X at a rate of 8 percentage for M years is same as that on y rupees at a rate of a square percentage for m square years. That is, here symbol interest at a rupees x4 at a rate of a percentage for m years is same as symbol interest for rupees y at a rate of a square percentage for m square years. Now, these both are same. Here, percentage, percentage cancel a square and a, a and a cancel. Now, m and 1 m from the sum square cancel. Now, remaining is x by y, which is equal to, here it is 1, here it is a and m. So, a m divided by 1 is x is to y. So, option b is your answer. A sum of money doubles itself in 10 years at a certain rate of symbol interest. What is the rate of interest? Here if I invest 100 rupees in the bank, after 10 years, I will get double the amount. That is 200 rupees. Now amount received minus amount I invested is equal to 100 rupees. That is, I received 100 rupees as interest here. And this 100 rupees I received in 10 years. So 100 by 10 is the rate here. That is 10 percentage. Option B is your answer. Here if you are using the formula, amount is equal to principal plus interest. That is interest received in 10 years plus initially invested amount is equal to total amount I received after 10 years. Here if I invest 1 unit in the bank, after 10 years I will receive 2 units. 
So you can see 1 plus 1 is 2. That is principal is equal to interest. In that case, simple interest formula is PRT by 100. And simple interest is same as principal. Principal is same as interest here. Now P and P cancel. Here time duration is 10 years. So 10 by 100 is 10. So R is equal to 10 here. But please don't use this formula. Try to use the concept. If you are using the concept, it will be useful for all, all type of problems. So here, when you see this question, just consider a sum of money doubles itself in 10 years. That is, if I invest 1 unit, after 10 years, it will become 2 units. Here, the difference you can see, it is 2 minus 1, 1 unit. So, difference is 1 unit means, this 1 unit increment is in 10 years at R percentage. At R percentage rate, in 10 years is this 1 unit increment. So, 0, 0 cancel. R is equal to 10. So, you can instantly write this answer using this concept here. If you use the concept in the second question, that is a sum of money at 10 percentage rate of simple interest doubles itself in how many years? Here, I invested 1 rupees, then I got 2 rupees after 10 years. Now, the increment here is 1 unit, that is 1 rupees. Now, this 1 rupees I received in y years at a rate of 10 percentage. Now, 0, 0 cancel, y is equal to 10 years. Or if you use this first method, that is I invested 100 rupees in the bank and I received 200 rupees after 10 years. Now, difference between amount is equal to 100 rupees. This is the interest I received in certain years at a 10 percentage rate. So, this 100 rupees interest I received at a rate of 10 percentage. So, in 10 years, I received this amount at a rate of 10 percentage. So, option B is your answer. So, always use the concept. In what time does the sum of money become 4 times at the simple interest rate of 10 percentage? per annum. If I invest 1 unit in the bank, after some years, I will get 4 times the initial amount. That is, I will receive 4 unit after some years. Now, here the difference is 3 unit. This 3 unit I received in y years at a rate of 10 percentage per annum. Now, 0, 0 cancel. y is equal to, number of years is equal to 3 into 10. 30 years. So, option B is your answer. Or you can solve this way. That is, I invested 100 rupees in the bank. After some years, I got 4 times the initial amount. That is 400 rupees. Now, the difference between the amount I received and amount invested is equal to 400 minus 100. That is 300 rupees. So, this 300 rupees is the interest I received in some years. Now, this 300 rupees I received at the rate of 10 percentage per annum. So, per year, 10 percentage per annum, I received this 300 rupees. That means, 30 years is the time duration here. So, option B is your answer. A lend rupees 600 to B for 2 years and rupees 150 to C for 4 years and received altogether from both rupees 90 as interest. Find the rate of interest at simple interest being calculated. Now, A lend to B, rupees 600 for 2 years. I will consider it as 600 into 2, 1200 for 1 year. Now, A lend to C, rupees 150 for 4 year. I will consider it as 150 into 4 is 600 for 1 year. Now, Total principal is 1200 plus 600, that is 1800 for one year. Now, this 1800 rupees principal and number of years is one year. And he received total 90 rupees as interest from these two, B and C. That is 90 rupees he received for this 1800 principal for one year. That is interest is 90, principal is 1800, number of years is one. Now, 
90 is how much percentage of 1800? 100 percentage of 1800 is 1800. 10 percentage of 1800 is 190. That means 5 percentage of 1800 is 90. That means rate is here 5 percentage. So option C is your answer. Rate is 5 percentage here. Or you can find this answer using formula as well. That is simple interest is equal to principal into rate into number of years. That is time period. Now, if you put this in formula, 600 rupees principal for 2 years at R percentage rate plus 150 rupees principal for 4 years at R percentage rate gives you interest 90 rupees. Now, if I take R by 100 as common, then 600 into 2 plus 150 into 4 is 1800 rupees, which is equal to 90. Now, 0, 0 cancel, 18 goes 5 times in 90. That means, rate is equal to 5 percentage here. So, option C is your answer. Symbol interest on a sum of money is 9 by 16 of the sum. If the rate is 9 by 2 per annum, find the time. Let us consider sum as 100 rupees. That means interest is equal to 9 by 16 of the sum. So 9 by 16 into 100 is 900 by 16. Now interest is 900 by 16 means this interest 900 by 16 is formed by T years at a rate of 9 by 2 per annum. Because the rate is 9 by 2. Here percentage symbol is not given. So you don't have to worry about divided by 100 here. Also we already taken sum as 100 here. In that case you can ignore divided by 100 in this rate here. Now for 1 year 9 by 2 is the rate. For t years t into 9 by 2 is the rate. That means t into 9 by 2 is interest 900 by 16. So, 9 and 9 get cancelled. 2 goes 8 times in 16. So, 100 by 8 is T. T is equal to 100 by 8 means T is equal to 12.5 years. So, option C is your answer. Same way, second question, symbol interest on a certain amount is 9 by 16 of the principal. If the numbers representing rate of interest in percent and time in years be equal, then, time for which the principal lent out is. Here, let us consider principal as 100 rupees. That means, interest is equal to 9 by 16 of the principal. So, 9 by 16 into 100 is 900 by 16. So, interest is 900 by 16 means, this interest 900 by 16 is formed by T years. At a rate of T interest. Because rate of interest in person and time in years are equal. So here time is equal to rate here. And we are representing it with letters. We also take principle as 100 here. So you don't have to worry about the divided by 100 here. Because here time is equal to rate. We are representing it with letters. That is T square. I will write it as t square. Now t square is 900 by 16 means t is equal to 30 divided by 4 which is equal to 7.5 years. So option D is your answer. A certain sum is invested for t years. It amounts to rupees 400 at 10 percentage per annum. But when invested at 4 percentage per annum, it amounts to rupees 200. Find the time. Here, certain sum means this is the principal here. So, this principal is invested for t years. Now, same amount of sum is invested for same years, but at different rate of interest, that is at 10 percentage and at 4 percentage. At 10 percentage rate, this principal for t years amounts to 400 rupees. But at 4 percentage rate, the same amount at same years amounts to 200 rupees. 
Now this difference in amount is equal to the interest here. That is 400 minus 200 is 200. And 10 percentage minus 4 percentage is 6 percentage. That is 6 percentage is interest is 200 rupees here. Because we already know amount is equal to principal plus interest. And if I am writing A1 as 400, then 400 rupees is equal to principal plus interest received in T years. So I will write it as I1 with the 10 percentage rate. Now A2 is 200, rate, 200 rupees which is equal to same principal at same years but at different rate that is at 4 percentage rate. So this is I2 here. Now if you take the difference, difference in amount 400 minus 200 is 200 rupees here. If you take the difference on right hand side, P and P get cancelled. Now we can see this is the difference in interest. Interest that is at 6 percentage rate. So difference in interest at 6 percentage is 200 rupees. That's why I say 6 percentage of interest is 200 rupees here. Now if 6 percentage is 200, then we need to find out 10 percentage. Because you already know this is the amount. Amount means principal plus interest. So if amount is 400 and principal is P and I is equal to 10 percentage rate interest. So 10 percentage is equal to 200 by 6 into 10 that is 2000 by 6. So interest here is equal to 2000 by 6. That means here interest is equal to a 10 percentage rate interest for this amount is 2000 by 6 and principal is equal to 400 minus 2000 by 6 which is equal to 6 into 400 2400 minus 2000 is 400 divided by 6 so principal is equal to 400 by 6 here now you can see if you take the ratio between principal and amount principal is equal to 400 by 6 and amount here is equal to 400. Now 400 and 400 get cancelled. Ratio is equal to 1 is to 6. Now you can see 1 is to 6 means there is plus 5 increment. And this plus 5 increment is for T years at a rate of 10 percentage. Now 0 0 cancel. T is equal to 5 into 10, 50 years. So option D is your answer. The simple interest on rupees 825 will be less than the interest on rupees 900 at 2 percent is simple interest by 15. Find the time. Here, difference in interest between principal 900 rupees at 2 percent each and principal 825 rupees at 2 percent each for same years is 15 rupees. Now, 15 rupees is the difference in industry here. This difference in industry is between these two. And this 15 rupees is caused because of the difference in principal amount. Because here rate and number of years are same. So, the difference in principal amount caused this 15 rupees. Now, 900 minus 825 is 75. That means this 15 rupees is received from this 75 rupees. Now, 15 is how much percentage of 75? Here, 100 percentage of 75 is 75. 10 percentage of 75 is 7.5. Then, 20 percentage of 75 is 15 rupees. So, 20 percentage of 75 is 15 rupees. But here, you can see the rate is 2 percentage. Rate is 2 percentage. If I write this 20 percentage as 10 into 2 percentage of 75 is 15. Now you can see here 10 is extra. This 10 is number of years here. Because we don't know the number of years here. So this 2 percentage for 10 years goes this 15 rupees. So option C is your answer. If you have difficulties in finding number of years, you can write this in formula. Simple interest is equal to principal amount into rate into number of years. That is time period. Here, interest is 15 rupees. 
and this 15 rupees is received from this 75 rupees principal with the 2 percentage interest rate for t years now we can see 15 goes 5 times in 75 5 into 2 is 10 10 cancel with this zero here then number of years t is equal to 10 years so if you have difficulties finding the percentage here you can write this in formula and find the answer so option c is your answer two equal sums of money were lent at simple interest at 11 percentage per annum for three and a half years and four and a half years respectively if the difference in interest for two periods was rupees 4 to 0.5 find each sum here sum is equal and rate is equal only the time period is varying that is 3.5 years and 4.5 years so difference between number of years here is equal to 4.5 minus 3.5 that is one year and difference in interest is equal to 4 to 12.5. So for one year at 11 percentage per annum interest received is equal to 4 to 12.5 because sum and rate are equal. At 11 percentage per annum for one year interest received is equal to 4 to 12.5. 11 goes 3 times in 41. Remaining is 8. 11 goes 7 times in 82. Remaining 5. 11 goes 0.5 times in 5.5. So 1 percentage is equal to 37.5. Then 100 percentage is the sum here. 100 percentage is equal to 37.5 into 100, 3750. So option C is your answer. If you have difficulties in doing this, you can directly apply the formula. Let us consider sum or principal as P here. So difference in interest received between the principal P at 11 percentage per annum rate for 3.5 years and principal P at 11 percentage per annum for 4.5 years is equal to 412.5 rupees. Now here this principal and rate are common here. Only number of years is varying. So difference in number of years is 1 year. So for 1 year 412.5 is the interest received. This is because of the principal P at the rate of 11 percentage per annum for one year. Now if you solve this you will get P as 3750. Now the second question is a certain sum of money was invested at simple interest for three years. If it has invested at a rate 7 percentage higher then the interest have been 882 more. Now you can see because of the 7 percentage increment in the rate for 3 years interest increased 882. That is by increasing 7 percentage rate for 3 years interest increased to 882. That means for 1 year 7 percentage is the increment in rate. For 3 years 7 into 3 21 percentage is the increment in rate. Because of this, interest increased 882. That is for 3 years at 7 percentage rate, interest received is 882. Then 100 percentage is the sum here. 7 into 3 is 21. 21 goes 4 times in 88. Remaining is 4. So 21 goes 2 times in 42. So 1 percentage is 42 means 100 percentage is the sum. 100 percentage is 42 into 100, 40 to 100. That is, let us consider sum as P here. So sum P, principal P at 7 percentage per annum for 3 year, interest received is equal to 882. So 882 is the interest received for the sum P at 7 percentage per annum for 3 year. Then P is equal to 4200. So option C is your answer. Adam borrowed some money at the rate of 6 percentage per annum for first 2 years at the rate of 9 percentage per annum for next 3 years and at the rate of 14 percentage per annum for period beyond 5 years. If he pays total interest of rupees 11,400 at the end of 9 years, how much did he borrow? Here we have to find principal. So for the first two years, he has to pay 6 percentage per annum. So total interest he paid for the first two years is 6 percentage into 2, 12 percentage. 
for the next two, three years he paid nine percentage per annum for nine percentage into three is total twenty seven percentage he paid for next two, three years now total number of years is nine years and period beyond five years he paid fourteen percentage per annum so nine minus five four years so for four years he paid fourteen percentage per annum so total interest he paid is fourteen into four 56 percentage for the next four years. So total number of years nine years he paid total interest 12 plus 27 plus 56. 5 plus 2 7. 7 plus 1 8. 7 plus 6 13. 13 plus 2 15. So 80 plus 15 is 95 percentage. So for nine years he paid 95 percentage. And this 95 percentage is equal to 11,400 because he paid Total interest of eleven thousand four hundred. So this ninety five percent is the total interest, which is equal to eleven thousand four hundred. Now we have to find the principal. Principal is hundred percent. Hundred percent is the sum. That is the principal. If ninety five percent is eleven thousand four hundred, then hundred percent is eleven thousand four hundred divided by ninety five into hundred. Now five goes. Nineteen times in ninety-five, and five goes twenty times in hundred. Then here, here this digit is four. If I multiply nineteen with six, nineteen into six is one fourteen. So six hundred into twenty, twelve thousand rupees is the sum here. That is the principal here. So option B is your answer. So they borrowed some amount of money at the rate of five percentage per annum for the first two years. After two years, the rate is increased to nine percentage per annum. After three more years, rate is increased to twelve percentage per annum. If he pays total interest of rupees eleven thousand six forty at the end of ten years, how much money did he borrow? Here we have to find the principal. For the first two years, he pay. Five percentage per annum. So total interest he paid is five percentage into two, ten percentage for two years. Then after two years, rate increased to nine percentage. Then after three more years, rate increased to twelve percentage. That means for three years he paid nine percentage per annum. So for three years, nine percentage into three is equal to twenty-seven percentage interest he paid. Then rate is increased to twelve percentage, and total number of years ten means remaining is ten minus three plus two. That is remaining years is five years. So for these five years, he paid twelve percentage per annum. So total is twelve percentage into five is equal to sixty percentage. Now total number of years is for ten years, he paid sixty plus ten seventy plus. Twenty-seven. That is ninety-seven percentage interest he paid for ten years. Now this ninety-seven percentage is the total interest he paid at the end of ten years, which is equal to eleven thousand six forty. Now hundred percentage is the sum, which is equal to eleven thousand six forty divided by ninety-seven into hundred. Now here ninety-seven goes one time in one one sixteen. Remaining is 194, so 97 goes two times in 194. So zero is remaining. 120 into 100, which is equal to 12,000. So 100 percent is the sum, which is equal to 12,000. So principal is 12,000. Option B is your right answer. Simple interest on sum of money is going to be rupees 300 after five years. For the next five years, principal is tripled. Then the total interest at the end of the tenth years. Here number of years and rate are same. For the first five years, simple interest is three hundred rupees, and for the next five years, principal is tripled, and number of years and rate are same means simple interest also tripled. That is three into three hundred, nine hundred is the interest for the next five years. So total interest become three hundred plus nine hundred, twelve hundred rupees. After ten years, so option 
B is your answer. Here, simple interest is equal to principal into rate into number of years. In the first case, principal is P. In the second case, principal is tripled. So, simple interest become 3 into the initial amount. Simple interest on a sum of money is going to be rupees 300 after 4 years. For the next 6 years, principal become 4 times. Then the total interest at the end of the 10th year is. Here years are varying. For the first 4 years, simple interest is 300 rupees for principal P and for the rate R percentage for 4 years. Now, for the next 6 years, we don't know the simple interest, but Principal become 4 times, that is P become 4P and rate the same, but the years is 6 years. Now you can see this part is same, that is P into R percentage into 4 is equal to 4P into R percentage, which is equal to 300 rupees. Then simple interest for 6 years is 6, 6 into 300, that is 1800. That means total interest is equal to 1800 plus 300, 2100. So total interest for 10 years is equal to 2100. Option C is your answer. A sum of rupees 18,750 is left by a will by father to be divided between two sons of 12 years and 14 years of age. So that when they attain maturity at 18 years, the amount that is principal plus interest received by each at 5 percentage simple interest will be same. Find the sum allotted at present to each son. Here, the sum 18,750 is divided between two sons of age 12 year and 14 year. When they attain the age of 18 year, they will get the same amount. That is here, 12 plus 6 is 18. So, 12 year old son get 6 years interest and 14 plus 4 is 18. So, 14 year old son get 4 years interest. Now, interest received by the first son is equal to here 5 percentage is the rate for both the sons. So, interest received is equal to 6 into 5, 30 percentage and interest received by the second son is equal to 4 into 5, 20 percentage. Now, you can see amount is equal to principal plus interest. If I consider principal as 100 percentage and amount received by the first son will be 100 percentage plus interest is 30 percentage. That means here when they attain the age of 18 years, amount received by both the son will be equal. So amount 1 is equal to amount 2. That means here interest is 30 percentage, principal is 100 percentage. So 130 percentage of principal 1 is equal to Principal is 100 percentage and interest is 20 percentage. So, 120 percentage of the principal 2. Now, P1 by P2 is equal to here 0 and percentage cancel. So, this will become 12 by 13. Now, 12 plus 13 is 25 parts. This 25 parts is equal to 18,750 in the question because Principal for the first son and second son will be equal to 18,750. Now 25 goes 7 times in 187, remaining is 12. So 25 goes 5 times in 125, remaining is 0. So 1 part is equal to 750 means 12 parts is equal to 12 into 750. 750 into 10 is equal to 7500. 750 into 2 is equal to 1500. So, 7500 plus 1500 is equal to 9000. Then, 13 part is equal to 13 into 750 which is equal to 9000 plus 750, 9750. So, option C is your answer. Here, this is simple interest. That's why interest is equal to 6 into 5, 30 percentage and 4 into 5, 20 percentage because simple interest is same for every year. A sum of rupees 2600 is lent out in two part in such a way that interest on one part at 10 percentage for 5 years is equal to that on another part at 9 percentage for 6 years. 
the sum lent out at 10 percent it is. Here let us consider sum lent at two parts as P1 and P2. Now interest on 5 years is equal to interest on 6 years. So 5 years interest is equal to 5 into 10 percentage that is equal to 50 percentage which is equal to 6 years interest that is 6 into 9 percentage is equal to 54 percentage. Now 50 percentage of principal 1 is equal to 54 percentage of principal 2. If I cancel percentage and percentage and if I divide it with 2, 2 goes 25 times in 50 and 2 goes 27 times in 54. Now principal 1 by principal 2 is equal to 27 by 25. If I add these two parts, 27 plus 25 is equal to 52 parts. This 52 parts is equal to total sum 2600. Now, 26 goes 2 times in 52, 2 goes 50 times in 100. That is 1 part is equal to 50 means, here we need to find out sum lent out at 10 percentage. Here sum lent out at 10 percentage is equal to P1. So P1 is equal to 27 parts which is equal to 27 into 50. 25 into 5 is equal to 125. 27 into 5 is equal to 135. So 1350. Option C is your answer. Some amount out of rupees 7000 was lent at 6 percentage per annum and the remaining at 4 percentage per annum. If the total simple interest from both the fractions in 5 years was rupees 1600, then some lent at 6 percentage was. Here, one part of the sum lent at 6 percentage and other part of the same sum lent at 4 percentage. We can use allocation method here. Now, simple interest, total simple interest received for 5 years is 1600. Then annual interest is, that is interest for 1 year is equal to 1600 by 5, which is equal to 320. So 320 is the annual interest. I will write it in the middle. Now, 6 and 4 are in percentage format. So I should write 320 in percentage format as well. 320 is received from this total sum 7000. So 320 out of 7000 in percentage is equal to 00, 0 cancel. 32 by 7 percentage. So write it in the middle. Now 32 by 7 percentage. Now I want to cancel this 7. So I will multiply it with 7. So I should multiply 6 percentage and 4 percentage with 7 respectively. Now 6 into 7 is 42 and 4 into 7 is 28 and this is 32. Now if I take the difference between left hand side and the middle term, it is equal to 42 minus 32 which is equal to 10. And if you take the difference between 28 and 32, that is 32 minus 28 is 4. So 4 percentage and 10 percentage ratio is 4 is to 10. I will cancel it with 2. Then 2 is to 5 is the ratio. If 2 is to 5 is this ratio, we have to find some lend at 6 percentage. Here some lend at 6 percentage is this is 6 percentage. So, sum lent at 6 percentage is 2 part. This 2 part is out of total part is 5 plus 2 7. 2 part out of 7 part. Total sum is 7000. So, if you find the 2 part, that is this 2 part is equal to 7, 7 cancel, 2 into 1000, 2000. So, option D is your answer. So, 2000 is the sum lent at 6 percentage. Then total sum is 7000 means this is 2k and this is 5k. So total sum is 2 plus 5, 7k. Now if you want to do it in different method, here sum lend at 6 percentage and 4 percentage total is 7000. Now one part lend at 6 percentage and other part lend at 4 percentage. So one part lend at 4 percentage and other part lend at 6 percentage. I will write it as 4 percentage plus 2 percentage. Now common is 4 percentage here. 4 percentage. So 4 percentage of 7000. Total sum is 7000. Which is equal to 
percentage and double zero cancel 7 into 4 28 so 280 is the fourth percentage of 7000 but here we already know 320 320 is the annual symbol interest symbol interest for one year is 320 but here it is 280 so difference between annual interest 320 and this 280 four percentage of 7000 as 320 minus 280 is 40 so here this 40 extra 40 this is extra 40 rupees this extra 40 is received from this two percentage because four percentage is 280 but annual interest is 320 so difference between 320 and 2 280 is equal to 40 so this 40 is this extra two percentage so if two percentage is 40 means one percentage is 20 then 100 percentage is 20 into 100 that is 2000 so this 2000 is for this two percentage part that is two percentage part constitute this six percentage so sum lender six percentage is equal to 2000 and sum lender four percentage is equal to 7000 minus 2000 that is 5000 so here option d is your answer sum lender six percentage is 2000 a sum of rupees 8000 was lent partly at 7 percentage and partly at 9 percentage simple interest. If total annual interest be rupees 620, the ratio in which money was lent at given rates is. Here we use allegation method. Now rupees 8000 was lent partly at 7 percentage and partly at 9 percentage. That is one part of 8000 lent at 7 percentage and other part lent at 9 percentage. Now Total annual interest is 620 means this 620 is received from the 7 percentage and 9 percentage of 8000. That is the 7 percentage and 9 percentage constitute the 620. But here 7 and 9 are in percentage format. So I should write the 620 in percentage format as well. The 620 is received from total 8000 rupees. So 620 out of 8000 in percentage is equal to 00, zero cancel. 62 by 8 is equal to 31 by 4. So, the 620 is 31 by 4 percentage. Write it in the middle. Now, to cancel this 4, I will multiply it with 4. Then I should multiply 7 and 9 percentage with 4. Now, this is 28 percentage. This is 36 percentage. And this is 31 percentage. Now take the difference between left hand side and middle which is equal to 31 minus 28, 3 percentage. And here if you take the difference between 31 and 36, 36 minus 31 is 5 percentage. So 5 percentage is to 3 percentage means 5 is to 3 is your answer. So option A is your answer. If you want to do it in another method, here 8000 is the total money. And one part lent at 7 percentage and other part lent at 9 percentage. I will write it at 7 percentage plus 2 percentage. Now, 7 percentage of principal 8000 is equal to percentage and double zero cancel. 7 into 80 is equal to 560. But 7 percentage of interest is equal to 560. But here, annual interest is 620. So, difference between 620 and 560 is equal to 60. This 60 is received from this 2 percentage. This 2 percentage is the extra 60 rupees. So, if 2 percentage is 60, 1 percentage is 30. That means 100 percentage is the sum that is 100 percentage is equal to 30 into 100 that is 3000 that means this 3000 is the 9 percentage part so sum is 3000 one part is lend is 3000 rupees then 8000 minus 3000 is the other part which is equal to 5000 rupees if you take the ratio between 5000 and 3000 which is equal to 5 is to 3 so, in this way, you can also find the answer.